to another episode of Marucci News. As you can tell, we have a bit of a new addition to our team. Jamie, tell us a bit more about yourself. Well, I'm a Year 6 student in 5-6 LS, and I'm a school leader, and I've been coming here since prep, which is seven years. Jamie, I really think you would be a great school co-lead anchor, I'm, and I'm fairly sure everyone does too. Let's check out what's happening this episode. Yes. We have Keone interviewing Mr Chapman and all about technology. We also have Jonas interviewing Miss Blackburn, the fabulous art teacher. Don't forget Isabella interviewing Miss Moyle and about a classroom. This episode, our lead story is on the Bright Minds program. Each year, students from Year 5 are given the opportunity to participate in Murchidor State School High Bright Minds program. That's right. The program is part of the high school's curriculum excellency program. Bright Minds is a three-day transition program offered by the high school. This year, the program is a little different as the school is running virtual enrichment and extension activities. You were part of the Bright Minds program last year. What was it like? I found Bright Minds was a really great program. I totally enjoyed it. My group got exposed to a lot of different topics. I was lucky enough to do some design technology and as well as sport. It was also int- interesting to be exposed to life at high school. For me personally, I recommend future students apply. The year five students in the program this year will also be able to visit the high school in term one next year when they are in grade six. Students from schools in our area got to apply. We got to chat to, to some of the students from our school who are part of the program this year. I entered the Bright Minds program because I thought it would test me. I entered the Bright Minds program because I wanted to prepare myself for high school and learn a bit more. I entered the Bright Minds program because I wanted to test myself to my best abilities. I entered the Bright Minds program so I could learn more and experience myself in high school. I entered the Bright Minds program because I wanted to experience high school. Yeah. I look forward to, in the Bright Minds program, to meeting new people. I'm looking forward to making friends with high schoolers. I'm looking forward to going to the high school and experiencing other learning devices. I'm looking forward to, in the program, to travel to the high school and experience their life. I would like to do anything but my class. I hope you all enjoyed the program as much as I did. Good luck to you all. Our next story is one for those who have always wondered about the cyber world. Keone chats with Mr Chapman, who is our school's IT technician. He handles all the iPads, computers and etc. Take it away, Keone. Thanks, Ethan and Jamie Lee. Today I'm here with Mr. Chapman for a, spe- for a special technology report. Mr. Chapman is going to be teaching us a little about a digital footprint. Mr. Chapman, can you explain to all of us what a digital pr- footprint is? Yeah, okay. Well, it's pretty much like it sounds. It's like walking on the beach. When you walk on the beach, you look behind, you can see the footprint of where you've come from and where, you, where you've been. It's the same as being on the internet there's a footprint or a trail where we've been digitally and they just record a little bit about each of your, all your movements as you go through the web on your browser. Okay. So, yeah, it's a history of where you've been and even a computer is bought to me to repair, I can look at that and look at history and find out what the person's been looking at. Huh. Okay, sounds cool. What are some hints and tips to to help us to, prof- to protect ourselves online. Okay. Many people don't realise it, but online we are being watched all the time, especially websites. And you might notice, you might do a Google search, for example, you look at, we'll use an example, say you're looking at the latest drones. You want to buy a drone. Oh. And then you might go to another web page and you see the little pop-up ads. Oh, yeah. And there'll be a drone. How does it know that you were looking for that or you're interested in that? So what they do is they look at your history, they look at what you've been typing in, and they are able to slant the page towards 
what you're interested in. Huh. So with that in mind, if you're putting passwords and whatever in, they can also see that if you're not careful. So a couple of hints. When you go to a website, if you know the website, type it into the browser, into the address bar at the top, not into Google. Mm -hmm. And they'll take you straight to it. But if you don't know the website and you put it into, say, a search engine, for example, Google or Bing, don't just automatically click the top one because it'll be an ad and it'll take you to a fake site, perhaps. It could do. So always double check where you're going. Make sure it is the one. And then if you're doing anything secure online, like banking or whatever, there's a little padlock will appear in the address bar that tells you've got a secure connection. Other hints, if you really want to look after your identity online, you can regularly delete your browsing history. Mm -hmm. So for another question, do you know when people are online? Yeah, on the network you, you can know when people are online, um, especially with our monitoring tools. We can even look at check everybody's history here. It's just a simple report. Not that well go looking, but if there's anything suspicious, we can double check what a person's been doing. And we can go back a year or two. Now our ISPs, wow. our internet service providers, say you're with Big Pond or you're with Optus or IINet, whatever. Or Dodo. Dodo. All of them record every bit of information on where you've been on the internet. Really? So, wow. pirated movies, there was a few years ago they really cracked down on people downloading movies and they started fining people and the ISPs were able to provide them that information how to do that. Hmm. That's when people started using VPNs, virtual private network. Hmm. So that is another layer of protection if you really want to protect your identity. Okay. Do you know how to track everybody's movements and, and what they have been doing online? Yeah, similar thing, it, because of the digital footprint, I can, everybody's username, as you know, when you go on the internet, it pops up two boxes. What do you have to put in that box? Your username and your password. Mm. So you're authenticating through a proxy, so it is recording where you're going. All I have to do is check the logs and I can see where you've been and what you're doing. Hmm. Do teachers sometimes leave behind digital f footprints? Like, can you check on Miss, what Mr. Lee has been up to and maybe change my grades just a little bit? Well, that's probably more hacking than checking what he's been mm. doing to change things. But no, it, it applies to every user. So the staff also get checked hmm. if we wanted to, but we don't unless there's a need to. Well, thank, thanks for your time. Back to you in the studio. My pleasure. Wow. Makes me a little nervous now when I'm using on the computer. Maybe I should ignore that email I got the other day when some from some guy from another country wanting to send me a million dollars. Good idea, Upin. I know stories is really exciting, Jamily. I've always wanted to be a better artist. I'm amazed at the artistic skill of some students. Yoni's got to sit down with our amazing art teacher, Miss Blackburn, and talk all things painting, sketching, drawing, and more. All yours, Jonas. Today I'm here with Miss Blackburn to talk about art. Thank you for your time, Miss Blackburn. My absolute pleasure. Are you going to be doing art again? I am. I'm really lucky to be able to do it because it's what I love. I am, yes. What are you going to draw? So many things. I hope I've got enough time to do them all. So we're going to be doing some outer space aliens. We're going to be doing some things to do with nature. We're going to be making totem poles. We're going to be doing perspective drawing. More than I can think of. Lots of animals as well. So lots of things. That sounds very interesting. Mm, a lot. Do you think you're going to do art club again? I started to ask people today to come to art club and we're going to be doing some life, still life painting with that, so really looking forward to that. 
That'd I be think good. I, I think I know someone who'll enjoy that. Mm, I think so too. I have good clues about that. Do you enjoy teaching art? I love teaching art. It's my favourite thing. I've always wanted to teach art and it's just the best job for me. It's, every day is a good day when I teach art. Thank you for your time this morning. My pleasure indeed. Back to you in the studio. Art is very fun. I can't wait to do more of it. Yes, I love art too. Why don't we move on to Isabella in this week's episode of What's Happening in the Classroom. She chats with Miss Moyle from the 2-3 Lively Monkeys. Over to you, Isabella. Thanks, Ethan and Jamie Lee. I'm here with Miss Moyle. So, Miss Moyle, what's going on in the classroom? Oh, lots of things. At this, this time, we're doing a unit about Komoko and the dragon. Very exciting. And the children have to make a multimodal presentation where they make up a story about somebody who has a fear and they have to overcome their fear. And they have to think about putting in illustrations and using visual feature um, things when they're considering like what sort of shots they're having, long shots or, or close-ups and where they put the layout of the pictures and of course in their writing they have to use descriptive language so we've been looking at verbs and nouns and adjectives and noun groups and all sorts of interesting things like that. In maths we've just been doing some work on money and we're about to do a bit more work on number pattern because we didn't do so well on the number pattern assessment and in uh, Hass um, we're doing uh, at the moment we're looking at uh, country and place from the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's perspective how they are considered country as being part of them as well. Uh, Mrs Edwards does the science but I understand they're doing some work on uh, earth and space and I'm not too sure what she's doing technology she's just finished something there um, so yeah that covers most of the main things that sounds fun your students seem really seem to enjoy coming to school what do you what do you make them make it so much fun well, I'd say the thing that they look forward to when I'm here is Friday. <laughs> and they love Fun Friday and Miss Moyle loves Fun Friday. And we like to have different activities that are engaging and fun to do. Can you please help Mr Lisp because sometimes he's a bit boring. <laughs> Hmm, I don't know. I haven't. I always find him very exciting and stimulating. <laughs> don't know why he doesn't do that in class. <laughs> Is there anything, anything else, anything else big planned for later this term? Uh, let's see. As far as I know, no. We're just um, doing our unit and uh, getting through that. Um, yeah. I hear you have been teaching here for a long time. What's what's the one thing you most love about your job? Hmm. Working with interesting people. Thanks for your time. Back to you in the studio. Wow, Miss Moyle is sure a fun teacher. I wish I could be in her classroom. I agree. I like all the teachers in our school. Okay, Upin, let's get sporty with Tyler. Tyler caught up with Jack, who was a bit of a keen tennis player. Take it away, Tyler. Thanks, you for the Jamie Lee Summer Sports interview today is for Jack who plays tennis. So, Jack, how long have you been playing tennis? I have been playing tennis for five years now. That sounds nice. Are you in a club or a team? I play for a Maruchido club. How long have you been playing in the club for? I've been playing in the club for two years now. Have you played in any other clubs? Um, I played in a different club back in Fiji when I was younger. That sounds nice. What's the best thing about tennis, playing tennis? Um, that it's easy to get used to and it's enjoyable. Do you have a favourite tennis player? Yes, Rafa Nadal is my favourite tennis player because he's inspiring and he's awesome at tennis. Who would you recommend tennis to and why? I would recommend to people who love running around because it's a very active sport and it is for people who love fitness. Thanks for your time. Back to you guys in the studio. 
Tennis is quite a fun sport now. I want to play it too. Yes, Open, I played a bit last year. It's a very fun sport. We should move on and see this week's weather. Or you, Liana. Thanks, Jamie Lee and Open. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's weather report for week eight. So, it's been cold lately, but it's getting into spring, so hopefully we can pack our jumpers away. Um, but it's okay, anyways. Moving on. <clears throat> Last week it was pretty cold, but luckily Monday is going to be chill, a chill day. It will be plenty of sun with a 0% chance of rain. Um, the temperature will most likely be at 15 to 25 degrees maximum. Now Tuesday, looks like we will have plenty of sun with patchy clouds in the sky. The chance of rain is at 0%. Again, that's super good. The temperature will be at 16 to 26 degrees. Wednesday, looks like it'll be sort of cold, but there might just be enough to sun to heat you all up. Maybe go for a run to keep you hot in case you're still cold. Um, <clears throat> the temp will be at, be at, oh, and also stay hydrated. But you guys might be thinking, well, Liana, that isn't that cold. <clears throat> I know, yes, but you never know. There could be some wind flowing around that will keep you a little bit chilly. You, um, you never know, trust me. The chance of rain is at a 0% chance again. <clears throat> um, Thursday, I oh, know. Seems like there will be a stray shower and some sun, but there is a 47% chance of rain. But, <clears throat> um, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna come. The temp will be at 15 to 23 degrees. Lastly, Friday. It seems like it's the exact same as Tuesday, but the temp will be at 14 to 23 degrees. The chance of rain is at 1%, so don't be expecting much. That's it for week, this week's weather report. Thanks, everyone, and have a lovely afternoon. And back to you in the studio. It's a pretty cool week for weather. Yeah, that's true. We are nearing the end of another episode. Great job, Jamie And once again, welcome to the team. Open, we need to give a shout out to Mr. Spur, a teacher that left us last year. Apparently he has been watching Maruchi News with his class in Mornington Island. We would love to hear from you, Mr. Spur, and set up an interview. See you next time, everyone. Bye, everybody.